Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University, and today we are in the Automated Transmission Laboratory, nice and quiet in here. And today we're going to be talking about uh, compressors. This is our first series of um, uh, videos on compressors, and basically uh, this particular series is about um, compressor identification and just general information about compressors. Nothing in depth at this point in time. So the first compressor I want to talk about is the uh, good old fashioned uh, inline compressor. And so I got uh, two types here. I got a York and I got a Tecumseh. Uh, one is a, a Ford that is a cast iron compressor. Thing is very heavy. Um, doesn't even have the crutch on it. It's extremely heavy. Then we have an aluminum compressor that I see a lot of times on the uh, Chrysler stuff that is um, a lot lighter. You know, I can hold this up with one hand, the other one, yeah, I'm not going to try it. I'll end up dropping it on myself. <laughs> okay. And so uh, these uh, compressors are, are pretty old. They're pretty heavy duty. Um, if I take a look at this one right here, we can kind of pull off the cover on it and take a look at it. You can see that you have uh, two pistons that are inline, uh, very similar to uh, you know, an inline engine, you know, like a four-cylinder engine, except it's only having uh, two cylinders instead of four. Uh, you know, I could I could turn the uh, crankshaft. It has a crankshaft. You can see how the um, cylinders will move up and down. Um, you know, some notes I, I want to make on this is that you know you see this a lot in the '60s and the '70s, all the way up into the '80s. You, you see them. Uh, you see them on uh, school buses and construction equipment and uh, over the road trunking. Uh, you know, they're very large, so you know for for trucks it's not a big deal for a big OV8 engine, but you try to put one of these in a in a, in a small four cylinder and it's. Um, it's a, it's a pretty large unit, but the pistons are, are, are very large. You have uh, probably cast iron uh, compression rings or maybe sealing rings is probably a better way to say it. And um, if I pull, take this one off right here, you can kind of, um, I have the head, I can pull off of it on it. And so what I want to notice about these heads is that on AC compressors, uh, they use uh, reed valves as uh, a valving system, not like an engine. And so, you know, I could maybe tip this one up and you can kind of see the two cylinders and I could turn the crankshaft and I got one piston out, but the other piston is still able to move up and down in there. And so uh, with the reed valve system, you have a, a pretty heavy, thick plate of metal in the very center. And then on the bottom, you would have a very thin, very thin piece of metal. So as the piston goes down and creates a vacuum, it's gonna take this big piece of, this, this thin piece of metal and it's gonna open it up and it's gonna allow the air to go in. And it's going to seal the the bigger, heavier uh, valve, the exhaust valve on top. And so, when the pistons are coming down, it's going to pull the exhaust valve closed. It's going to pull the intake valve open. It's going to allow the refrigerant to go in. And then, as the pistons going up, the outlet stroke. So it has a, either an inlet stroke or the outlet stroke. That's all it has. It's going to push up on this um, you know, on this intake reed valve. It's going to close it. Versus the pressure is going to build to a point where it's going to pop open this um, this top exhaust valve and it's going to allow the refrigerant to go out. So you have a set of valves on each cylinder, you know, an intake and exhaust on one and an intake and exhaust on the other. So uh, this, you know, they use this all the way up into the 80s. I, um, I have these, uh, I have one of these on my 85 uh, Grand Wagoneer, so it's kind of fun to play with on it. Um, I'm going to pull around another one over here so you can kind of take a look at it. You know, this is one that has the clutch on it. And, and, and a lot of times with these, uh, these uh, inlet uh, compressors, uh, inline compressors, uh, you, which has pistons, it has um, a set of um, service valves on them. And so a lot of times there'll be a cap on it where you don't even see this stem, but uh, it's kind of a unique scenario on this. Also, it has a, um, it has a, uh, I can pull this open, it has a, uh, a spot where you can check oil. So you have a you have a sump on these that will hold oil, and so you know you typically find some type of dipstick. What's nice about these compressors is they can be mounted like this, they can be mounted like this, they can be mounted like this in the engine. You know, so you have a a a, a, a bolt hole on either side of this compressor in order to check your oil, depending upon which one is facing up. So. So obviously, if it's, if it's bolted this way, it's pretty easy to stick your, your tool in, whatever you can find, in order to measure the oil level and make sure that you have oil. Now, with these compressors, you can't just simply pop this screw out anytime you want to in order to, um, to check um, oil. Because if you do, all the refrigerant in the system is going to escape. Now, 
Don't ask me how I know that. I just trust me on that. It's uh, not very fun when you have an R12 system and you just let all your R12 out by um, chucking the oil. And so I have another compressor over here. I'm going to bring that. I'm going to use it as my demonstration. So this guy right here, you know, it's an aluminum compressor. It has the the screw on in order to check that. So before you open that up, you have your service valve. And so um, the service valve is going to be in three positions. And right now, when you are normal operation, the, uh, the, the service valve should all the way be backed out. And they, they call that the back seated position. Right now, the refrigerant could go in to the compressor, or if it's the discharge, it could come out. But anyway, this hose here and the compressor are connected together. This is not connected at all. So you have an opening between these two points right here. If I put this valve to the mid seat position, turn it a couple of times, and I like to use a, a quarter inch, <laughs> a quarter inch um, uh, a wrench versus a, a pair of pliers, because if you use a pair of pliers, you're gonna, you're gonna round off that square um, drive, and then you're gonna have to use a pair of pliers forever. Now, not only is the inlet and the outlet of this service valve operational, but now you have refrigerant that's going to come out of this port right here, which is where you would physically hook up your gauge. And so, so the only time you move it to the, um, to the, to, to the mid-seat position is if you want to um, hook up your gauges. If you want to hook up your, uh, if you want to check your oil though, <laughs> the problem is, is that when you, you need to go all the way to the fully front seated position so you know, this is the front over here and now the valve is all the way pushed in and so it's actually closing off this port right here so refrigerant cannot get in or refrigerant cannot get out so you want to have it in the in the front seated position so now when I open up my bolt in order to check my oil only refrigerant that's in this compressor is going to leak out and of course you're going to want to do them on both on both cylinders so you have two cylinders there so you're going to want to do them on both sides one well one's going to be the the the, the suction hose and the other is going to be the discharge hose so you're going to want them doing on, on both of them in order to, to keep that refrigerant in what's what's also nice about that is that if i wanted to you know i have an old system that has four to five pounds of refrigerant in it you know an old 70s vehicle or something like that i could physically um uh, uh front seat both the valves i could take off <laughs> this fitting and again the refrigerant stays in the hoses and in the uh, condenser and in, inside the evaporator and so if you have to replace the um, compressor itself it's kind of a nice way of doing it the uh, the fun part is is that it, again when you get to a vehicle you know you're gonna have a cover typically on this you're gonna have to undo the cover in order to get the um, the get to your uh, valve the um, <laughs> these covers have been long lost from now but um, Maybe I'll show you a video of my um, of my Grand Wagoneer because it still has a cover on it. So here's the inline compressor on my 85 Grand Wagoneer. And so you can see that we have our, our caps that are still on here. And so if I already took a pair of pliers and loosened them up, but if you take the caps off, you can then see your quarter inch square nut and again these are already back seated so they're in the original position they should be at when the vehicle is running and if i want to hook up my gauges and this is the retrofitted the 134a i need to turn this valve in to the mid mid seat position and so let's see that there and i'll put those back on so i wanted to show you guys what those what those caps kind of look like because if you don't know what you're doing then they don't look like anything and then on top, you can see that you have your your nut where if I wanted to check my oil in the compressor, I can do that. And then we're gonna check the hub real quick. And okay, yeah, I see I could turn my compressor nice and easy. That's always important. Make sure it's nice and smooth, make sure I could turn it. And so there you go, there's an inline compressor. It's aluminum case on an 85 Grand Wagoneer. But if I'm gonna go to the original position, which is the back seated position, if I want to get to the to the spot where I want to pull out my oil hole in order to check oil in the compressor, which you need to do that on occasion, or the compressor is gonna burn up. If you keep oil in these things, they're gonna last forever. It's just they're so 
how do you do the bill? Um, you have to go through the mid-seat position. <laughs> and if you realize uh, that takes a few amount of turns in order to get to the back seat position. So in the meantime, if you don't have a set of gauges hooked up, there is no valve or anything like that in there. All the refrigerant is leaking out. So what's nice about these is that it has caps on it. So, you know, so if you have your caps on, you don't have to worry so much about it. But if you have one like this that doesn't have the cap on it, they were long lost. Uh, you're going to want to put your uh, gauges on it. So at least as you're going from the front seat position to the back seat position, you're not losing the refrigerant. Another mistake that students make is that they, um, they have their gauges hooked up, so they're doing some diagnostics with this. So if I'm doing diagnostics, let's put it back in the mid seat position. So I'm sitting here, I'm doing my diagnostics. I, I'm done with it. I'm ready to, uh, to take my gauges off. They take the gauges off, either, you know, this could be, obviously this is originally R12, but it could have been retrofitted uh, to 134A, and it could have a separate adapter on here for a 134A where you're able to do the quick connects. When you do that, um, <laughs> you got to make sure that you put this back to the original position. Because if you don't, and you unhook your gauges, you just released all your refrigerant, and now you have to start all over again. So, so that's not, not fun. And so these are the York compressors, or the sometimes what kind of people will call them the inline compressors. I tend to call them the York compressors just because that's what we tend to uh, call them when I was working for, um, for a Chrysler. Uh, stay tuned because we'll have other videos on compressor operation. And if you're wanting more information about just general uh, air conditioning, uh, automotive related information, you could look at my uh, Professor Pintane YouTube channel. Uh, I'm also on um, Facebook and I have a brand new uh, webpage. Just look for Professor Pintane. Thank you very much. Have a good day.